Hey guys, what is up? Dave here coming back to you with a brand new video on the channel and I know I said I wouldn't turn into a React channel or something like that and I guess it's hard to be a React channel when you don't put your face on things um, and you don't have a face cam I guess but this is just something I know a lot of information about. I've talked to a lot of tuners because of having my Fiat and uh, Humble uh, humble Mechanic brings up a lot of good points in this video, and I wanted to kind of talk about my absolute hatred and the history that at least I know of with piggyback tuners. So a piggyback tuner, go to my oh-so-favorite website when it comes to the Fiat 500s. They have chip tuning. There's this thing. The way these things work, the way these things work is they plug into your PCM, and then there's a couple of little wires hanging off of it that connect to other sensors in the engine bay. And the way these work is they basically lie to your ECU and your PCM about um about sensor reason readings good lord i'm half asleep today i'm sorry so dinos do not look this smooth with a chip box they don't look this smooth with the jb4 they don't look this smooth with any kind of piggyback tuner they really don't this is a terrible representation it's literally just somebody basically opened up microsoft paint and drew some lines with some numbers that matched up to probably some form of a dyno run that some car did with one of these things. Let's look over Humble Mechanics video and you'll see right away the big difference between dyno tuning and having your ECU flashed and using a piggyback tuner. So Humble Mechanic has a Mark 8 Golf R which I wanted one, and as you can see, it does come with a pretty cool app where it will actually give you sensor readouts and stuff like that. This app for JB4, they make you purchase separately. It's not free. So the JB4 uh, race chips, or whatever they call it, are everything is separate. It's a build your own package sort of thing. So you have to buy the main, what I call liar box, uh, the main piggyback tune box, which comes with one map on it. That's it, the one basic map. Then you have to buy the Bluetooth dongle to plug into the box. That's another $140. And then you also have to buy, purchase the app. And the app is $28. And then after you do all of that, all the maps are available on the handheld, and you can go through and you can switch maps. So right there, you're at like $720 to $750 spent, which, newsflash, I'm using Torque because it's what I have for this example, but newsflash, how much do you think a tune is? Yeah. Yeah. A tune with all these extra features, you're adding 400 to the price. So yeah, it ends up being a thousand dollar tune, but it's a tune. And John over at Torque at least does a fantastic job of looking over the data log properly. Will let you know if he sees anything that's wrong, and if you have any problems after the tune, also gives you some pretty good support. Let's look at Euro Compulsion. Oop, you can tell I was digging around their files. <laughs> Whoops, I didn't know that URL would come up first. Uh, come on. Look at speed motive, too. A Barth, I'll show you how much their tunes cost. Uh, they have tunes. Where is it? I know they have tunes. Where's your tuning stuff? I really want to do a digital dash. Huh. 
probably typed the website Shop Euro Compulsion. My bad. So let's see how much their tunes are. ECU tuning. If you want to just clone, it's 500 bucks. If you're doing custom tuning or anything like that, it starts at 349 If you want to just do their standard off-the-shelf stuff, it's 800 bucks. And you tell them what year you have. You tell them what transmission. And this comes with so many things. So it comes with a raised rev limiter, a raised speed limiter, downpipe optimization, park in neutral rev limiter. So basically that's for automatic transmissions. That's uh, that's the removal so you can go all the way to redline. Has launch control for manual, pops and bangs, comes with the burbles, comes with dual map. It even has some of these things like the uh, bigger turbo support, E85 optimization, a whole bunch of things. But their calibration is delivered within 48 to 72 hours. There's, they have a tuning guide. All of them are, you know, 91 octane minimum. And look at that. It's 800 bucks for all that. Or if you want to do a custom tune with them, 500 to Barth, custom tune, or phase three. Their phase three, you already have... Euro drive and all that is just an extra 250 bucks or 350 bucks for a custom tune. Then they have their tuning requirements and all that. So, another one that's really good, Speed Motive. Let me go to the I don't know where their tuning stuff is. So we're going to go open Flash Tablet. Which I also was digging around their files. Don't get mad at me. Different companies. Let's look at automotive. We'll go on Fiat. Their tune starts at 500 bucks. And what's good about their stuff is automatic tuning file generation, no laptop required, free off the shelf maps available for various vehicle modifications. It comes with stage one and stage two already on the handheld. Um, stage 2, rarely used, whatever. High speed enhanced data logging. Theirs seems to be the best, but it's also the lowest power amount, I think, as far as buying a tune. I really want to give Open Flash a try because Open Flash, the whole thing with Open Flash and surrounding their name is open source. So they will send you the tuning map file and you can open it up yourself in WinOLS and actually do the tuning yourself to try to get a little bit more out of your car if you go see like a dyno specialist or something like that, a dyno tuner. So I really want to give them a shot. I don't have the 500 bucks right now to do so, but I mean... On their handheld, they have all the extra stuff unlocked where you can see your engine speed, TPS, uh, charge air temp, your map air sensor uh, readings. I mean, all of this stuff is here. I really want to give them a try. I really, really do. But, and look how smooth this dyno line is. Like, it, yeah, it's a little bumpy, but it's because it's a standard off-the-shelf tune but they support so many different cars it's fantastic versus uh did they have a tuning they don't have a dyno uh picture do they that's what i wanted was a dyno picture there we go so you can see all their different maps and stuff like that there we go so as you can see, you know, stock is this blue line and it's a little bumpy. Definitely has a big dip right here and then goes down. But there's the phase two, which is the red line. Very smooth all the way to red line. Phase one is a little choppy, but it's overall very smooth. And phase zero is pretty smooth as well. And then there's your 695, which is right here, which is also pretty pretty smooth their phase three is also fantastic look how smooth it is it's that's the smoothest one out of their entire graph which graph which is insanely fantastic so why do i bring up the dyno graph because with a piggyback tuner holy crap it's it's terrible 
So he does the dino run on the uh, highest map because that's what JBL recommended. Look how choppy this is. So here's the blue line. This blue line is stock tune, stock tune right here. So 276 torque, 293 horsepower. Very smooth, very clean. And you look at it with the JB, the JB4. And at first it's very smooth, but then it has these dips and valleys and ups and downs. And it's very choppy. So let's move forward to a second run. Come on, he's talking about how choppy it is and stuff too. All right, we're gonna go to the second run. And you can see he picked up a random amount of horsepower that was on the same map, by the way. Same map, picked up another 25 horsepower out of nowhere, but look at his dyno graph, it's terrible. There's this huge dip right here. If you're at a dyno tuner and they're monitoring your car with the dyno and they see this dip, they're gonna assume tire slip or they're gonna drastically assume that there's a problem with the engine and they're gonna stop dynoing the car immediately. This is terrible. You should not have a dip like this in your custom tune. You shouldn't have a dip like that in your stock tune. So these piggyback tuners stop using them stop giving these companies money it's not worth it they the dyno tunes alone for a fiat 500 for example 800 bucks and you get everything or you know what we're talking volkswagen golf let's go united motor sports this was the tuning company that tuned my volkswagen golf r when i had one i had a mark 6 at 2012 so we'll look at volkswagen how far um we'll look at 2012 since that's what i had it was performance engine software so they actually kind of got rid of their stage two now they just have loaded but even still 750 bucks it's exactly the same cost and that's a dyno tune that's the exact same cost as this jb4 thing after you have to buy everything for it and their loaded tune it's Loaded tune is calibrated to your car. Go to your UM dealer and they will do it specifically. It adjust it's usable user adjustable launch control, user adjustable no lift shift, user adjustable boost control, and user adjustable octane. I had all of that on my car. It was wonderful. I wish I had the flex kit. Their anti surge function, their boost was super smooth. It was such a fun car. So this is stage one on UM. And as far as I was told, this is actually exactly my car. Uh, they used my car back in July 2012 to kind of make their base maps. And from what I was told, this is my car in this picture that I had. So look how smooth that is. That's another Volkswagen, professionally dyno tuned. Again, for 750 bucks, like, you can't get much better than that. So, why would you spend the money to get something so terrible for your car? Don't drive with a piggyback tuner. Please, stop buying piggybacks. If you live someplace that still has emissions testing, or I think over uh, across the pond they call it MOT, um... A lot of these tuners, they're pretty much all the same. They come with this thing. A lot of these newer tuners, they come with some form of a handheld. All of them have your stock map on it. So a week before you have to go do your MOT or your, uh, your emissions testing or something like that, you flash it back to stock. Not a big deal. If you are beyond the ability to flash it back to stock, at least on the Fiat 500 I know, so for my 500 of Barth, if I have a high flow downpipe, the tune can actually be modified that I no longer get a check engine light because I'm on stock catalytic converter due to the O2 center on the downstream, I want to say. So if I just get myself a new exhaust, basically, a new downpipe, the catalytic converter upgraded, I'm going to be completely fine and 
pass my emissions test whether I'm tuned or not. So there's not much to worry about when it comes to flash tuning like this. Will it void your warranty? Yeah, it might. But again, just can reset it back to factory and at least in the United States, the dealership has to if you're trying to warranty a car, the dealership has to prove that anything a customer did to the car is what caused catastrophic damage for the warranty roof. My friends, a lot of my friends and some previous people I don't call friends have had warranty work done to their cars even after tuning them to the max. I know a guy who got a free engine from Hyundai through warranty simply because it blew up while he was tuned. But obviously he didn't tell them that and Hyundai's are known to explode anyway. So got a free engine. Like it wasn't a big deal. And they do that with the Kias, they do that with um Hyundai Elantras. I know some people who've gotten a free turbo because their turbo failed. Even though they were tuned, you know, the dealerships couldn't really prove that it was the tune and they totally admitted that it shouldn't have been it shouldn't have failed the way it did. So don't buy these JB4 things. Don't. It's not worth it. Don't buy it. Get your car professional. If you're going to modify your car, do it right. If you want to if you are looking to get a car because you want to start having a car you can modify safely. Look into a Mark IV Volkswagen. So something like a 1.8 turbo Golf or even a 2.0 turbo Mark V Golf or a Mark V Jetta. You get a Mark V or a Mark IV Jetta with a 1.8 T pretty cheap now. Um, that's really your best bet. So I just wanted to rant for a while because I hate these piggyback things and it's really cool to see Humble Mechanic do a video about them. Don't use them. Stop. Save your money. Don't use them. Peace out.